Welcome back to the Talk Past podcast, our little uh, medieval podcast, end of the month. Now, it's decided, a labor of love. Indeed, uh, I've decided to make it a, an end of the month podcast, so that way I can maybe or maybe not post something in the middle of the month. That's like a sewing project or otherwise. I was going to do on the 6th, but of course I didn't. Uh, I'm, I'm slow and it takes a while to film things. No, that's that. That's just, don't worry about it. Indubitably. But um, you, of course, co-host. Tis I, the Frenchiest fry. Mostly recovered from COVID. Thumbs up, baby. Ugh. And I, of course, N M N M M. Oh, I'm not M and M, but I am an NC. Uh, <laughs> Red Iron Riot, Red Iron Riot, aka the War Queen. Mm-hmm. And whatever I am, or whatever, etc. I'm just a, a, a cosmic. You're a peach. peach. That's what you're all. That's what you <laughs> are. <laughs> I'm the peach that, yeah, the, the peach that Jareth gives to. Uh, uh, okay, now you made it. <laughs> you made it weird. Just now, so now what I need you to do is I need mm-hmm. you to take a still of that scene and, and, and paste your face over the peach. I will so. do you one better and I will cosplay Jareth. Oh, gosh. And I will, and I will <laughs> cosplay Sarah and I will cosplay Hoggle. How that sounds like that sounds like, anyways, anyways, before, before you just absolutely steamroll me with your shenanigans, we mm-hmm. are talking today about. Jabaro from the third, from the third season of Love, Death, and Robots, which indeed I I want to say this just off the bat. I was really excited to be able to talk about Love, Death, and Robots because it's there's a bunch of stuff that's real fun, and mm-hmm. I, it's it's all sci-fi. It's all you know future mostly yeah. horror, fi- paranormal. But then I saw Jabaro. It's, I'm hoping, uh, I hope I say that right. Ibarro. Ibarro? Ibarro? Um, Because it, it takes place in Puerto Rico Ooh. during the time of, uh, of course, Columbus. If not, this we'll discuss it, of course, but it might be the conquistadors of Columbus. Um, Christopher, of course. Uh, that dude. So, so there's a bit of Spanish. There's a bit of Puerto Rican. So, um, so Ibarro. Ibarro. Yeah. Which I'm ignorant to. My apologies. Yeah, um, we're both we're both we're both crackers, heck. In, in terms of Spain and uh, Puerto Rico. Mm. Anyways, it was uh, directed and written by Albert Miogo, uh, with sure. uh, also written by Tim Miller. So just the information on that, so people know. Who but... is Tim Miller? Is he? It sounds familiar. He... It does. I don't know if I should like him or hate him. Just uh, the... let's see what the IMBD says. I should have looked at. Um, yes. He was a director for Deadpool, director for Terminator Dark Fate. Okay, then I don't like him. <laughs> producer, executive producer on Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which I might not be a Sonic the Hedgehog fan, but it seems to be doing it. My friends who enjoy Sonic have loved it, and I got to give that it, to it at oh, least. Oh, he's, he's an executive producer. Is, does it explicitly say he's the writer? No. But I mean, still, if you're involved in it, uh, yeah. let's see. Oh yeah, you know, uh, uh, people are creators of projects, and they they give themselves executive producer credits, but they have more involvement than just executively producing. True, but he also directed Deadpool. T- Deadpool, so yes. that's also. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking <laughs> at his list of films, and I do not like him. <laughs> well, not one bit. But I do like. Uh, what we are discussing. So he borrow. He gets a thumbs up on that at least. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I guess, do you mind if I start? Just by I, all I, means. Um, so, he borrow is, um, and this is from the IMBDs. So people are like, oh, this is what it is down at its core. Mm-hmm. So what it's on the box. What's on the What's on the tin? A deaf knight and a siren of myth become entwined in a deadly dance. A fatal attraction infused with blood, death, and treasure. And it's just, huh. Yeah, as I watched it, and I only watched it once, but uh, because I mean they're only fifteen minutes. Um, I wrote things down, and then I did two days worth of research, and I feel like even that is still not enough research with all of the content in uh, Hibaro. 
<laughs> so but, can, can I just ask like right off the bat before you try and you know do a playthrough of it what was your first opinion of Hibaro um I'm happy that it was short first and foremost <laughs> I know that's a weird thing to like uh I'm kind of done with the age of long movies like I have I love Lord of the Rings but I just can't well I can't there's... get through three hours anymore I just yeah. watched Jurassic World Dominion and that was hot garbage <laughs> that movie was two hours long and i'm like oh so something that's very simple 20 minutes to 15 like the obi-wan series is just like 30 minutes um uh, you, know, <laughs> you know what i'm okay with that uh, but, but but yeah uh, no no there's not a lot and, of like longer form stuff that's really been enjoyable lately yeah but um a little bit more on point of probably what you're asking um i like the detail of the animation in, in, I, I don't know if it's the same person working on these same shorts with that particular animation, because you see various different episodes that have almost realistic, like unreal engine five use this, of CGI. I really do like the animation that shows up, but, and I think, I think they do kind of, they use some, um, what was the term? Um, live, a little bit of live action stuff. Well, yeah, they use a uh, uh, motion capture to an extent, you know, oh, a live extent. model. If you watch the um, making of Hibaro, it shows that they have dancers, live models that are actually oh, doing okay. everything, acting everything out. All right. Okay. And the director kind of discusses the reason for why everything is done in the uh, in the short. All right. Uh, well, so but so overall, you liked it? I did. Um, I've got some nitpicks, but also some positives. Mm -hmm. And also we'll run down Love, Death and Robots as a whole uh, on the side as well. But um, OK, OK, let's let's see what it was your immediate uh, reaction of things that you, you know, honestly, the first like I want to say the first bit of Yibaro where it's like the forest shot and all of a sudden these like the color of the horses as they galloped into the frame and the shiny bits. And I just like mm -hmm. that see that that introduction to this. I just loved it. And what I, like I say, I really want to talk about it. Cause like, it's just something medieval. It's just something, you know, I enjoy. Actually, uh, I know this is actually outside the realm of medieval. It's Renaissance. Well, Renaissance. But, 16th, 17th but, still, century. but still relevant. Still relevant. Um, in terms of, of one, the, the sort of social hive mind, but also mm -hmm. kind of re uh, how people but, but represent, represent that era in, mm -hmm. in mediums. Cause we just did, of course, that weird rapey movie. And then we talked about <laughs> Northman, uh, Northman, whatever. Uh, so, and then this thing, which we'll, we'll divulge a little bit on the sort of his, history and what's good, what's not. But uh, I'm with you on the forest thing. Uh, if you watch it, it's very short, but a making of, uh, I don't know if it's the director, I think it's director. But he went into a forest and secluded himself and just listened oh, to the forest man. and looked and saw the world and, and took pictures and video and sound. And it's exactly what you see in the, in the short, not, not as journey, but the, the, the way you would see it. If you were there, like the night, you know, the night vision scene when she's coming up to, mm -hmm. uh, which is also the character's name, Himaro. Um, that is, that that's almost just an exact shot of, of his, his night vision when he was camping it's incredible wild uh but okay so it's one of the that scene itself that starting scene and just the fact that those those horses are just so pretty the the, the barding the colors the this weird little jangly thing they've got going on which i i don't think that is actually a thing but you know, um, as the, not just the jangle of the armor and the barding, it sounded like the barding of the horses um, had a lot of extra metal bits on them to make the make noise. Okay. And I really enjoyed how that that metal sound, that metal of you know of coins hitting together, of jangle mm -hmm. jangling armor, really. What's the word I'm looking for? contrasted the, the the nature sounds really interesting yeah, like, and I, uh, crotal, crotal bells oh um, but but the bells I, I put on the side of a horse so people know that you're coming mm -hmm. which i don't 
know if that's the thing. Would they still have been using that in the 16th, 17th century? Uh, I mean, we still use it today, but uh, uh, I'm not 100% in terms of the Spanish conquistadors in Puerto Rico. We should, we but, should, we should do an episode on that. That would be neat. I don't think yeah, that's something so, a lot of people talk about. One thing I want to kind of compare, because there's a comparison from, from a show that I love. Uh, obviously, which, we have... Which the, show is that? Buffy. But we have the dichotomy of the noise. The forest is just filled with noise. The people, it's just noisy. It's just in a barrage of just volume. And obviously, he's a deaf character. So we're going to have that sort of black and white dichotomy of noise. And then... Yeah, the, oh, the that interpretation too. Interpretation of what a deaf person would quote unquote hear. Um, that that switch back and forth on top of the already you know man made versus nature sounds chef's kiss yeah, is very reminiscent to me of the episode the body from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That is the episode. It's been around for so long, so I'm just going to say uh, where Buffy's mother dies. Oh, wild! There is so much noise. There's so much action going on around Buffy that when she discovers her her mother's body. Ooh. There's no mu- there's no music. Everything falls silent. It's almost, you it's know almost what? Uh, the show itself is dead. Ooh. You and, know, I never know like why I never got into world. Buffy. It sounds you like should. it was right up my alley. You wow. should. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll, I did an episode with Katie, but that kind of tangented it, 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 it off. Um, I'd love to talk Buffy again. But anywho, uh, so it kind of had that dichotomy, you know, and Buffy's interacting with the real world. Do you get that? that almost excruciatingly painful noise just beating down on her, you know, the, the sound of people enjoying life outside, the sound of the ambulance and, and uh, doctors and all that stuff coming. All oh, while there's no music in the show, Buffy herself is just... Ooh, that sounds intense. Silent. Um, it, it's a, very similar in this situation where all this chaos around him and he's just living in this world of silence and un- uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And trying to uh, find some understanding to the chaos in his own realm, both in his world as well as with the siren. Uh, uh, one thing I want to mention, though, first and foremost, regarding him and how he interacts with the world before we get into the, him and the siren. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Is I don't know if this was made up for the short or if this is a legitimate American sign language. But that is sign language in the, the a little bit we see it a little bit yeah i don't know if that's asl or not i kind of hope it's not that's an uh, interesting question you write that down obviously because asl wouldn't have been around then um but yes we people obviously came up with stuff to, to communicate with those that could not communicate by regular means you um, know, I, I would say that is 100%. You need to write a letter to the director and writer and ask him. Well, I don't because, know. Yeah. I, I think you should. I think that's an interesting conversation to have. Now, obviously, I don't. I, I wish I knew ASL more intimately. So I can't mm-hmm. be like, yeah, that, that is or that isn't. Um, mm-hmm. I can only look at that. It's like, oh, interesting. Uh, it's it just as a curiosity of yeah. accuracy. Uh, that's still an interesting question. And that is something that's, that's neat. That actually is a neat mm-hmm. thought. So, okay, so stop, let me stop gushing about the first, you know, quarter of the, of, of the program where nothing, where it's just the, you know, the epic yeah. forest shots. The, the other reason I'm going to say why I enjoyed Jibar, Jibar, Hibaro is that, um, I, my sister is a belly dancer mm-hmm. and does stuff at, you know, at, 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 at fairs and whatnot. And yeah. I know it's something that she like she she saw she watched it she enjoyed it she loved it and it's just like I'm glad that she can find that enjoyment out of this character design for the siren, you yeah. know. That was because such a, it, oh, uh, it's so good. Such a unique, <laughs> unique take on the siren. That too. Um, that too. I, I really appreciated that. Her appearance is actually based on uh, Western Europe, uh, Russia, India, and North of Africa. So not I don't I don't know how much of of Puerto Rican culture or Spanish culture is in there, but but the director explained that those are his uh, inspirations for her, and I found Please. it very unique. She's she's temptation, right? She's she's gold. She's she's basically the embodiment of greed of what people want. 
Right, but also as you know, as just a creature, mm-hmm. it, it's uh so we're introduced, and I guess we're gonna try it as we talk. So we're at the point, you know, the siren has been introduced. We get these bits of hers, like, "Oh, what's going on over here?" And these conquistadors doing a bit of having a bit of a moment. And yeah. the the one thing that I, you know, watching after rewatching it, you know, watching the whole thing and then rewatching it, you're knowing what you know at the end. You're like, "Is this like? Are they out here looking for the siren?" That Are is they a question? You know, like the, um, the 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 wiki, the IMDb is just like, oh, they're just like it kind of they're passing through. But it's like I don't know. They, they, I I believe that, but also it's just like. Are they are they hunting? Is this like just a just a continual thing that happens? Well, if uh, in one of the shots that we get to see at the bottom of the lake, well, well that's what I said at the, at the very end. At the very seen, end, you see it's just a mountain of skeletons. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe they were looking for her, and then just weren't sure how to. Like, were they looking her? for her, or is this forest that or she's? Maybe, yeah, the people maybe they were just her. And they just like, oh, well, yeah, every time, every time, you know, people go in there, they don't come out, you know, kind of like a fey mm-hmm. thing. Um, I know he, he battle picks up a, a piece of her, you know, a piece of her gold. Uh, uh, in this bit where he's like, her body, and that activates her. No, so. this, it, the way it's cut, it looks, it, it, it's not that bit. It's just the fact that he touched the lake, I think. The way that she's presented of uh, emerging from the lake, which also, and this is just me being a complete enormous dork, okay? Okay, completely enormous dork. Mm-hmm. The parallels of the siren to kind of the lady of the lake. Yes, it, I thought that about that uh, as well. <laughs> like, ugh. In fact, I said, I thought of that before I thought of a siren. Right? Um, I, I was just... I didn't think it was a siren specifically until the, she actually started using her voice, but just the motions of her coming out of the water. Mm-hmm. I really would love, like, that's just, it's a neat thought comparing that to, you know, what you would imagine the lady of the lake would, could look like. Right. Cause I mean, for me, or maybe for many people, siren, you either think of the historical sort of bird woman, or you think of a manatee. <laughs> uh, or or uh, something like um, I could have sworn I thought Ariel. I thought yeah the Greek the Greek sirens were like harpy birds and yeah. then you think like I thought harpies and sirens were completely different things and it's just like it's weird it's not one of those things that's like concrete like mermaids or werewolves yeah, there's, there's an episode of what we do in the shadows that has the I love that episode I love that episode that's I that that, that it's so pure. <laughs> Sorry, um, I didn't go off to that. I just oh, really enjoyed. Yeah, no. I need. I need to tell. I need so to tell so many people how much I enjoyed season three of what we do in the shadows. Oh no, we need to do an episode on, on what we do in the shadows too. Oh, Sandor, my beloved. Mm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is. The, however, Hibato takes place in about. I'm not 100, percent but roughly, I think, like 15th to 17th century. I'd um, say that the, the the Morions and the the armor it was very fluty yep. gothic kind of armor and yep uh, was it that just like I there was some points yeah where the anime, where it's like okay it's the CG and what's going on but still isn't that fun armor to see it is I saw the real thing up here at a museum um, they did really good with the armor uh, especially if you look at the reflections and how it moves and the make like they. You know, like Northmen, they they went through the effort to, at least with the armor, make things look historically good. I just see if there's an Osprey book about the about the conquistadors, just so I can see some good illustrations. Ah, um, in fact, uh, in terms of time frame, well, you know, oh, actually, it's, it's, they, we don't see them use firearms, so that should actually give us a pretty good idea to where to look for the time frame, do it, yeah. doesn't it? Well, uh, since it's based in Puerto Rico, since they are conquistadors. Uh, Christopher Columbus came to Puerto Rico specifically in late 15th century um, to middle fingers for Christopher Columbus, of course. But uh, after holla, holla. after he left, they didn't really bother Puerto Rico very much. They kind of like, I don't know, maybe got taxes from them or something or kind of like Ohio where it's just like, it like, exists, it existed. It's there. Yeah. Every now and then they'd be like, oh, that exists. Let's, let's mess them up a bit. But so I, I'm kind of on the on the idea that maybe this is one of 
uh, Columbus's groups. Uh, I can't. I can't mm. say there. Obviously, nobody in the short is a good guy. There of course. No oh, oh no, that's part of, part of why I love it. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you know, Hibato is is his his goal is greed. Well, you know, so it's guys, and the the siren's a monster. Well, okay. So part of why I enjoyed Hibaro overall is this balance. It kind of gives you until that one pivotal moment. You know, it as it starts, and we you know we see the interaction. We see you know here's the Deaf Knight interacting. Did they give him his name, or is he just the Deaf Knight kind of thing? Hibaro. That no, is no. His name. He borrows the name, and the siren I is. I don't know what. The okay, so is. he borrow. You know, you kind of, if you think about, you know, in Disney esque kind of fantasy, this first section of the short is it's kind of like it's building this kind of reverse Tarzan kind of story, mm-hmm. and you know, I could see how easily it could have gone that way. Because yeah. it, because part of the thing about you know he, between Hebar and the siren, this is probably the first time the siren has actually you know seen a person that is not you know freaking out and drowning drowning themselves. Yeah, from her voice and I like That's, watching her that like- understand that you know and you know quiz out you know be quizzical over that. Right. It, it builds up this like it could be this beautiful beautiful little love story. It could be. Like, but it's not. No. Um, obviously, she has an intrigue with him, but she's also made of jewels. She's literally made of the stuff. So, so we notice when they kiss that you know, she's. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, we can't do that. We literally do cutting that. into him intentionally Ooh. or not. But one thing I do want to talk about for Hibero is his, his, his face, his look. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's covered in tattoos, which. I know is a thing around the world. I don't know if the Vikings did, but but lots of cultures have, have facial tattoos and tattoos everywhere, even if it's not on the face. But I don't know hmm. if the conquistadors did. I don't know what the tattoo culture in Spain was at the time. So I'm like, mm, I'm going to give that a slide because I don't know. It's not really my time frame of interest. Mm-hmm. However, uh, and again, ignorance, but he, he definitely looks like he has a super modern beard, like facial hair <laughs> and eyebrows and stuff. And I'm like, mm. I, I get that. I mean, but also, like, I don't think nose, <laughs> the nose rings a bit. Yeah. But Siren, I'll give a pass because she's a monster. She's kind of. Yeah. A, uh, but is it like <sighs> the design of that? It's just and especially as we see it play out in the. And the in the in the end of the sequence where you know she's been stripped and she only has like one of these little dangly bits left. Oh, talk and, about and costume design, baby! Yeah, it's it's a very interesting setup for her. I loved her design. Uh, I loved all the designs, but um, yeah. So I don't know. He kind of looks to me. He looks super modern, but that's also my ignorance in not knowing. Uh, the culture of Spain at the time of the conquistadors at the time of the late 15th century. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts on that are. I, I, I think that's just, it, it feels like it should be a history that more people are interested in considering, you know, our country, the country's cultural makeup, but mm-hmm. so yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, Oh, I mean, why don't we know for sure that, that we, we should know that also it could, yeah. like, it's just also, it's like a little bit hipstery and I get it. I get it. I wouldn't say hipster. I'd say modern. I, I just, I just, I think the only, it feels like the only thing that's missing is a man bun. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, so we get the sequel, you know, we get to this point where, you know, the siren starts actually, you know, doing her thing. And this mm-hmm. is where it's where I, that question of, are they here for the siren? Are they just passing through kind of like they, you know, just get off the middle, uh, get off your horse in the middle of the forest to do some weird mumbo jumbo with a priest. Yeah, th- it's it's just so that was so very odd. Um, it, it was described, I think, officially as them pledging to the priest. Yeah, but it's just. But to it, what extent? Yeah, it, it's a, it's 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 a bit odd. Um, you know, especially since it's like you have some sort of, you know, you have a leader type. You have, you know, it's not just. 
a group pass like through it. So you guys, you guys are an organized force doing something. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Why are you here? Yeah. Um, when you should be at like the village. Yeah. Uh, and, and, the, uh, the natives. Yeah. And then we get this whole, this whole sequence of just these, they're pirouetting and pivoting and just the animation for this moment. And the shots you do the shots we get from this sequence, especially near the end. And <sighs> poor horses always get. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wrote down <laughs> twice. I wrote down twice. Uh, animated Ooh. horse death. Although they didn't die in the water, fortunately. Um, so I think then, I'm pretty sure some did. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but it's just like, and then, and then I wrote down at the end of the, and at the end is beating the horse. Like, like I know my arguments have always been, like I'm so sick of seeing horses killed and and beaten, yeah, and, ripped and and fall, being forced to fall. It didn't. It Honestly, didn't feel like it was a lot, but it didn't feel like they were trying to be gratuitous with like. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's animated, so right. It's a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little different. Uh, the only thing I was like was when he's, I understand he's panicking and he's just bashing the horse, and I'm like, come on, come on, you hit it once and there you go. Yeah. Hitting it anymore is not going to make it faster. <laughs> yeah you got one uh, horsepower that's it but on a this, Ferrari. this whole sequence and like like i hate to say it but the end at the end of the sequence where i i guess they kind of imply he's you know he's not just ibarro's friend but he's like a brother or at least you know like one of the like com soldier comrade brother types the yeah. dude he, he signs with and i'm pretty sure that's him at that moment the with the horse in the water that's just such a a fun like i'm not saying like fun that's it's just like a well done shot mm -hmm. and yeah just, there's a lot of, there's a lot that comes out of this 15 minutes or less than 15 minutes it really minutes is out. and i know you say like i i could agree that you know it's it, i like it that it's you know short but i would still love to see so much more of this <laughs> uh. I, I stay with you um the love death and robot episodes if you want, let's talk, let's do that little side divulge. Maybe, maybe it's just it's like again we get to talk about this because it's you know Renaissance medieval. It, it's it's medievalish enough for me to be excited about and want to talk about it in right. the context. Anyways, um, so we get this whole sequence and like again the armor, the animation, this even I really love how the armor just is done so well that it st it still stands out in the motion. If if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. And oh, just absolutely hog wild. Yeah, it's With... a very, very chaotic. Also, chaotic editing, mm -hmm. um, which I, I assume is on purpose. It's a little jarring at first. It, it is um, very jarring, but I, I kind of like that because it gives that it, again. This in this is something without word. There's there's mm -hmm. no any there's nothing vocal in this story at all. It's all sounds. It's all just noises, not talk. And how that works to just the music just oh I can't describe it very well. I don't have the vo I don't have the vocabulary for it. You know, um when he when he starts to pluck away at her body, um, the jewels and gold on her person, which mm -hmm. are which are her, they're not it's not clothing, it's literally her. Mm -hmm. Um it reminded me of it was only recently released in the past couple of years, but there's a music video for a i don't remember the film but it was song uh i should know it right it's a marilyn manson song but um it's a song by manson and in the video uh there's this similar sort of concept where there's this sort of like not exotic but it's interpretive dancing figure this sort of like wayward female figure that's uh, mm -hmm. in the video mm -hmm. stripped naked i think but but she's got like pretty much pieces. she's got pieces on her and uh, the apple of Sodom is the song. If you want to look it up, um, it's just a B side for a movie, but, but in the video at some point, it's just like little metal jewelry on her and they get plucked off of her. And it's like you stabbed her or something, Like she'd be <laughs> to bleed out yeah. and, and die. And that was, that kind of reminded me of that video uh, as he, as he was doing that to her, like, he he plucked a piece just to see kind of like what is this? Is this, you know, is she made up? It, yeah, yeah. He plucks it. He's inspecting. 
as you can think, you know, he saw he the, he found the piece in the first sequence, the parts that he got impaled on his hand in the second, and all the dots coming together mm-hmm. in that moment. Ugh. And, and like like Kim Kardashian to a Marilyn, you know, Monroe. If you want to talk about Marilyn's dress, just plucking oh. away, <laughs> destroying her. Why and, do you curse me like this? Uh, yeah, no. Um, Anyways, yeah. as 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 we are discussing the. It takes the story takes a turn at this third. I want to say this is like the, the start of the third. No, no, I'd say it started like a second act, hmm. where it's you know the knight realizing that the siren he borrowed realizing the siren is cover is you know scales of gold and all this is actual gems and it just goes violent like it. Like I said earlier about that, you know, this could be a really romantic story and then this hard turn. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for for folks that are interested in medieval culture and, you know, understanding the true concept of chivalry as it wasn't just, you know, oh, be a good knight. It was, hey, you guys need to stop being thugs and be, you know, you need to, you should be this instead. These are, these guys are so cool. Knights were thugs. Knights were absolutely thugs. Very political. Yeah. And every it was time- almost like like a religious right, right? Like that's how they Ugh. they saw their their laws. And it just it's the way that you know you, if you know it, it's one of those if you know you know, and you know all the way your mind will it takes your mind all the way to the start of this where even though the story and kind of the framing was presenting Kibaro in a little more, you know, gentler light, you know, more of a, uh, I want to say, I can't clean think of, slate. not a clean slate, but the kind of, you know, actual like gentle Disney prints versus the, you know, the thug that he actually is. Mm-hmm. And just the, and it's, it, it can be, I would as much as I enjoy Hibaro, I would have to say if, you know, if I knew someone had a history of trauma from SA, if you know what I mean, mm-hmm. um, I'd be like, listen, I really would love for you to watch this, but it, it's bad if you have that issue, if you have to deal with that trauma and seeing it, it's just, but that's also just that how well actually, it's yes, done. Yes, that's that you reminded me. That's one of the actual uh, concepts that went into this is, is the concept of a toxic relationship. That is what oh. they have. That's the siren and Hibato. It's a toxic relationship. The embodiment. Mm, I, it's oh man, it's just it's so intense, and in watching that happen in the way they do it, and oh. she's she's seeking connection, and he just wants. He's just using her as a material object. Oh, it's it, it it's it's all the, it's like seven metaphors in one. Mm-hmm. It's and, a hydra oh, of oh. metaphors. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then and then of course we get the ending. Oh, I would I, I wonder I I I didn't want to forget this. I mentioned I thought of this and I wanted when um he borrow grabbed after his he borrows horses and shirt and he grabs the blanket and the saddle. I just sat there and laughed because it's like, of course you're taking the saddle. That saddle is really probably worth a lot of money, bro. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> and just oh, you yeah, know yeah. thinking of the. The, the mundane sort of parts of living and it's just like yeah no that saddle was probably you know if not worth a lot in qual and you know the like gold and embellished it's like it's a good quality saddle that you paid to paid for the quality on that possibly even custom you know oh yeah no you think uh, do you think i don't know do you think a deaf person would want a custom saddle i think any knight would want a custom saddle oh well, that too that's a weird that's a weird thing that's a weird thought um, but then, of course, you notice when he drinks her blood, which is washing in the river, is is her blood grants him the ability to finally hear. Okay, okay, hold, like- on, hold on, hold on, you're jumping a little bit ahead because that whole sequence behind, you know, with the river and the water, mm-hmm. we can't just, oh, we can't skip that quite yet. Like, I, I'm okay. not, I'm not, sh- I, I kind of get, and I think this is mostly because I've been rewatching Miyazaki stuff mm-hmm. the last couple weeks. Um. It feels like this is a bit of a o- homage to the uh, to the end of Princess Mononoke, if you're familiar uh, with it. Yep. You know, of you know, nature has been injured in nature's heckin' pissed. 
Well, yeah, like, I mean, she uh, she represents the nature that they are intruding in. Yeah, uh, and again, again, the seven metaphors in one. It's not just you know, man versus nature. It's colonialism. It's you know, uh, the, the the future I mean, coming towards the past. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Anyways, just that whole less sequence. Than 15 minutes. Yeah, that whole sequence just gave me this. Just ooh, man. Mm-hmm. And then and, of course, River of Blood. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, and you know, uh, funny thing. Uh, uh, I don't know. Obviously, they're gonna interpret it differently, but I've I've heard, and I don't mean that as a pun, but uh, I've learned <laughs> that, that uh, people who do suddenly get the ability to hear again, uh, it it is jarring because that... you, especially if you've never heard before, yeah, you, I... you you don't just interpret and understand mm-hmm. it's all just word it's, it's, it's all just noise it's yeah. all just noise i you... really like again again i loved so much of this this sequence where he borrow you know he washes his face he drinks some of it whatever he heal you know it heals his hearing somehow and just the realization of what was going on at that moment i'm like oh my god because it's hard it's it's impossible to imagine that as someone who's you know never been you know doesn't have hearing issues and doesn't have the comfort of that happening in like a doctor's (sighs) office. Yeah. But yeah, when it, you know, when he finally realized, you know, he's, you know, he's freaking out. He's, he's, you know, absolutely cog wild again. Um, Sorry, but, um, but you know, it, you know, as he suddenly the slow realizations you see, and again, this is all conveyed without a narration, without somebody saying something. This is mm-hmm. all the direction of the motion and the emotion on Hibaro's face. It's all the animation. The animation. Uh, insert the uh, Iron Giant art meme here. Mm-hmm. But, and you know, it, it's it's wild because he's suddenly realizing and he's like, we don't, I. it's something that we really can't, we can only imagine at. But you got to consider that A, Hibaro is apparently a knight of some, of some status. To be, you know, work to be where he is, and to do that while being deaf. Mm-hmm. So you know, this guy in in the few minutes he has this, and he knows that he has this now. Just and again, how he conveys it through motion and, and the animation of his face and his emotions. Yeah, it's just it's so good. It's so good. And then, of course, our sequence of the rising of the siren. Yeah. Oh, this broke. It's again. It's like, like as I said earlier, it kind of was building it as a romance. You didn't expect it. You really don't expect it to go. The, didn't expect it to go the way that it went. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, and, um, I didn't at the time because that was the first Love, Death, and Robots episode I watched. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. But then, you know, the more you watch, the more it's like. Everything's everything's a twist ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so you know, there, there's that, and then because I, you know, again, we kind of get this interpretation of the siren as not, you know, I want to say I don't want to say stupid, um, but not human intelligence. Naive. Naive. I guess that's the be- the best word for it. You know, naive, she's never, you know, again, it's kind of, it looks like she's never encountered a person before. And it's kind of like, you know, a dog seeing another dog for the first time. It's Right, she wants to understand. Yeah. But, but the, there's, it, there's uh, the language barrier, quote unquote. Yeah, that too, that too. Like, again, Hibaro might be able to read, is probably able to read, but, and, and write because of his death. And, you know, but... Yeah, and his status as, as well. It's important to think about. But, you know, how else does he communicate? He probably only talked to his quote unquote brother, or whoever that person. I'm saying brother. I got I got brother vibes. My brother, sure. Um, where, you know, it's like, how how does he communicate with people? He probably was, was the only person he could talk to in the whole world. Maybe a few other folks who, you know, under, who, who could sign for him. Or, you know, mm-hmm. he was able to build a rapport with. Ah, sorry, I kind of, it's just, I, I I really enjoyed this. <laughs> Anyways, oh, okay, yeah. we're, so like he's coming to realization. Just, 
the sirens back up. And again, you know, we have another moment of realization after the siren, this, that sequence of her, just like, I'm still alive, but what, you know, this is it like, this is who I was. When she does, when she draws him in, it feels like she's not actually drawing him in. It feels like she's, she's suffering and that she's actually uh, reacting to the, her own personal pain rather than trying to drown him. Like she, like she's crying and screaming. I mean, I see that, but also, tragedy. also the motions, her motions, her movement definitely still had that same "I'm dragging you to me" vibe. So I, I, I'd, 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 I'd have to argue, yeah. argue with you on that one. I'd say yes, yes, but also it, it feels, it felt like there was an overtone of, of it was more pain and and suffering than than what she was prior to. Ugh. like. Uh, and the I the, the wiki for Lo- for Love, Death, and Robot says that the siren is reborn after this, and I don't think that's that's right. And I hope that's not what people are taking away if they come look looking to you know for a. Yeah, the- I mean, he bashed her in the head with a rock. <laughs> yes, might kill yeah. a normal person, but he only did it once. It all, and I mean, again, you could knock someone out doing that, but yeah, she's a monster. So you know, like she walks on water. She, I mean, she's a creature. I want to say, I say creature more of a, less of a monster. Yeah, sure, sure. Like, she didn't straight up attack the knights, but she wasn't not aggressive. To, like, she wasn't aggressive, but she didn't. I, I can't think of how to put this right. I'm sorry. She did what she knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just. Uh, and uh, this, the way it ends with that. And like I said, going back to, you know, here's he borrowed at the bottom of this lake with the rest, you know, and now this siren probably forever thinks that my, all everyone else is like this. I mean, yeah, no, he could have, oh. he could have escaped. He could have counted, you know, his chickens and, and went home and been lucky to, to leave with his life. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. instead, because of his greed, he went after her. Uh, well, he didn't go after her. She, she went after him, right? Uh, but, well, well, but well she approached green. him first, and then he kind of he did kind of chase her yeah. again. He did uh, he did chase her a little bit when he when he knew he could have her in reach. Um, he he went after her, and and for the purpose of of it, basically it, it, dressing her down, he's stripping her. I I think I think the best the best word used in this point is flay. It was like it just gives you the, yeah. ugh, the sh- it just makes you shiver. Yeah. Oh, you know, if he had just been like, you know what? Everybody else died. I'm going to run away. <laughs> I'm still alive. Okay, good. Let me. Yeah, no, it's a. And again, that falls into those knights are knights were basically thugs. Like real, real, real knights were, were, were honest, just absolute jocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were uh, words. They were Matt Damon from The Last Duel. They were mm-hmm. just. <laughs> Matt Damon and Adam Driver. Oh, they were just and Ben Affleck. Uh, you know what? You, you know I, I say that. And did you know that there was like there's a weird old King Arthur cartoon where it's like a football team turns into the Knights of the Round Table. Oof. Sounds like an anime. No, it is like this is like we're talking He Man '80s vibes cartoon. Oof. No, thank you. I'm good. I'm going to have to look that up now. Somehow Palpatine returned. (laughs) (sighs) Um, So, so then closing thoughts, perhaps on that episode. And then I do want to digress a bit just to kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some thoughts on love, death and robots. Yeah. yeah. But um, your closing thoughts on Hibaro. Closing thoughts on Hibaro. I, I, this, I enjoyed this a lot out of, all three seasons of Love, Death, and Robots. This is definitely I can see why people are for going crazy over it. I mm-hmm. really can. I understand it. I love it. I wish, like I said, I would love to see more of Hibaro. But the sad truth is, if Love, Death, and Robots does anything, you know, they'll just do more of the free robots, and it kills me. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about yourself? So- what about yourself? Tell me your thoughts. I did like it. Uh, you know, you you mentioned it, and I'm like, all right, well, I'll. I'll- Drop the 20 for Netflix because B Stars is coming out next month. Ah. Um, 
the only reason I ever ever subscribe to Netflix at this point is is uh, B Stars. Um, but I liked it, and it, it made me want to watch more of of uh, Love, Death, and Robots. And I was definitely amused, uh, not so much amazed because, I mean, the game I'm working f- on for the channel is the same graphics. Mm-hmm. So, but so here's person, but amused with the graphics and how. So well, here's well the, thing, the way I see it. It's I wish there was more. Uh, you know, a better thing for Hibaro to be part of because it would be more, you know, medieval fantasy short short form stories. But yeah. regrettably, Love, Death, and Robot is those short form stories, but it's all sci fi, most you know, sci fi paranormal know, stuff. Maybe when I get back down to FL, we should do that then. Ah, uh, but um, wait, what were we doing? Oh, uh, well, speaking of actually hung out with Kate today in, in uh, Salem uh, as an aside. But um, Love, Death, and Robots. So uh, maybe you first, because you're more familiar with it than I am. I obviously binged it in one day. Uh, what is your opinion on, on that show itself? Love, Death, and Robots. It's there. It always seems that short form anthologies like this do well if not do well then you know they just vibe with so many people they become cult classics think of Mm -hmm. like heavy metal for example is a great i think it's a great example um if you're you know a 90s for 90s kids like me and you kind of things like the cartoon cartoon show on cartoon network that's you know these short form things it's not all the same but it's still these it's enough of a developed story to be super enjoyable yeah. And I can see why Love, Death, and Robots is as good as it is, mostly. I say so, mostly. So for me, it's going to be a little bit uh, controversial. Uh, and this is definitely a generalism. Uh, it, does not apply, it does not apply to every episode. But, and I do like it. I do like the series. But at first, and maybe it's because of the order of the shows I was watching, uh, it kind of feels like a Black Mirror for bootlickers. Uh, i mean definitely has a black mirror vibe well so here's what i would say i would say black mirror is is love death and robots for bootlickers black mirror is is very you know kind of oh the future is awful and everything is awful etc etc while love love (laughs) death and love death and robots is more we're just having fun with this yo Oh, we're, yeah. just having, we're just having a good time. It just there's an awful lot of like military, army, police, that kind of stuff in in. Love yeah, that too, always, that too. I mean, I liked the werewolf one. Werewolf one, um, baby, <laughs> I knew it. But uh, uh, and I like it obviously now coming to memory. Um, my favorite one was I didn't. By the way, I didn't watch any of the anime ones, and I will not. Um, I don't feel the need to. Uh, I, was, I have to argue with that on a couple. I, I eventually will, but to me, I was enthralled with the the CGI animation style, uh, so I kind of wanted to keep to that, except for that one episode that's live action. Um, Wait, which one is that? The Ice Age and the Refrigerator. Yeah, the the, the, the mini stuff. Again, they're not all winners. Yeah. <laughs> but Love, so, Death, and Robots, it's fun because it's just, it's not... Except for the, the three robots ones. They're, they're not, you know doom and gloom finger shaking moral you know heavy thoughts oh i would actually disagree i well in a sense that i think there's a lot of subtlety to it that's part that's, those, that's part of it it's subtle of those heavy themes are very subtly put in there like uh the werewolf episode uh, you know, how they're they're basically war dogs you know that's all they do is they're trained and bred to fight and then at the end the loss of his friend he decides you know what F you, I'm going home. Um, like, walking away from the Afghan war. Oof. And, uh, like, it, 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 again, I just, it's serious, but it's not overbearing oh, yeah, no. serious. It, it's it's a serious like, that respects you as a thinking individual. Yeah, I also like the rat episode. Ah, based, I see. I, that's, <laughs> the, that's the episode I wanted to see more of. Yeah. Oh, no, I, 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 I see it. That, the rat, the one that, that befriends the old dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I see that. That's that's such a five 
kind of thing. <laughs> but um, again, you know, the thing is too, it's, it's fun. It's, mm-hmm. and I, I like, I, you know, it's that fun vibe with the futuristic overtones. Yeah. It, like, of course. Kind of, kind of like a uh, Star Wars Visions. Except Which is good. anime. Except good, yeah. Well, I mean, I liked some of them, the Star Wars Visions. They were very unique and very interpretive. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Star Wars works well for, for anime because it's based off of Japanese culture. But um, mm-hmm. back to Love, Death, and Robots. You know, yeah. So and I, don't, I don't know. Do we do, are, How long are we at? Because we could do a whole other episode talking about Love, Death, and Robots. I'm not going to lie. Eventually, I'm sure. Because <laughs> um, you know, uh, A part two uh, slash continuation. Oh yeah, because I mean, there's so much going on in that series alone. Like, I just um, it's it's it, it's kind of hard to be like, you know, it's not very medieval though. That's why I was happy no. that I could say, you know, hey, let's talk about Hibaro because it is something related to what we are talking about here, and I can talk about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even though it's Renaissance, um, but still relevant to to how the interpretation wow. of of medieval is kind of starting to take a serious turn. People are starting to actually mm-hmm. understand it. And want it to come across properly, mm-hmm. you know, as, as opposed to Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> I can only hope we start seeing. Like, it's been a trickle. You know, we've had stuff like the, the last duel and the Green Knight. It, it kind of, it feels like they're starting to trickle medieval stuff back into pop, the pop culture wheel. And and accurately, as best as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh yeah, Northman's a good example too, that's true. Which, in Salem, by the way, uh, a little personal aside... Uh, they had a Viking store. Oh, neat! The store was the all the store was just Viking themed. Uh, mm-hmm. You go in there, you get like Viking and Norse culture, and, mm-hmm. and yeah, there's some paganry in there, um, modern paganry. Um, but it was it was uh, fascinating to to see in Salem, uh, Salem, Massachusetts, of course, you know, the set of the old witch trials, uh, a, a little piece of of what we do. Uh, wedged in there next to a, <laughs> a tarot card shop and a Harry Potter store. <laughs> nice. Well, okay, so let's go ahead and kind of wrap it up here. We'll definitely uh, just, I want to talk more about Love, Death, and Robots, even if we don't do episodes about it. I just, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, Eddie, um, what's what's coming up next on the docket for you? Indeed. So, of course, I did mention that I'm going to try and keep the uh, podcast episodes as a last Monday of the month episode because i don't want to just just be doing the podcast mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and and also kind of put a little more pressure on myself oh. even though i'm working a full-time job mm-hmm. to get something out as a middle of the month because i want to do more i need sewing. to get a camera i need to figure this out i pr- I will get this figured out and to be able to contribute oh, more in you know um uh, i may have stuff i could send you but you could also use a phone uh the video that i did for the uh martibo bag which i'm finishing up i just i'm nice. i'm Debating the interpretation of how I wanted to come across, and the uh, the pillbox hat episode mm-hmm. was all on my my iPhone. Oh, neat! Um, oh. At this point, I feel like it's it it, it works. Well, but, yeah. I've been wanting to get a dedicated dedicated camera, anyways. I've been wanting to Twitch stream stuff. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Ooh, good! Uh, I would probably stick to YouTube. Twitch yeah, well, I'll figure it out at this point. But um, yeah, just that, just uh, uh, making sure that the podcast is end of the month. Uh, I've got the sewing thing still coming up, uh, among a few other things, and then maybe whatever else. I want to... that. Yes, that. Yourself? <laughs> um, I am going to be at MetroCon in July, and I'm super excited for that. Um, okay. I'm going to be there with... Uh, and I'll get the link for you so you can put it in the description, with a uh, clock, uh, a group called Clockwork Carousel. They're a... Uh, they they're, they're a group that do like resin pours, uh, model uh, model making kind of stuff like that. They're a real neat group. I'm really excited to be working with them. Okay. So yeah, that's what I got coming up. I'm super I'm super jazzed. And um, besides, like again, again, I had COVID last week and I wasn't able to do. I am going trying to get involved with a armored combat group here and where I am in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, so I'm super exactly. excited for that. Same. I'm trying to gather people up here because there's a lot of SAA people. I want to fight other people who do what we do and, and would probably love to make some live action content. So I'm I trying fight with a sword. Indeed. I'm trying. <laughs> um, beyond that, uh, actually, just just a little f- funny aside. 
since uh, it's a little bit of personal info out there. So I went to Worcester, Mass. recently and um, went to the, I don't know what the name of the museum is, but a museum, art museum. And uh, I couldn't go upstairs to the actual medieval Europe uh, exhibits because I have a phobia of heights. Oof. But but downstairs was all like Roman, uh, you know, the Roman Empire uh, and Ooh, Greece and, and China and stuff like that. Uh, the, the Greek armor, the helm Ooh. looked like it had a spear put in it. And I noticed that person who wore that helm had a very tiny head. <laughs> uh, there were very small people back then. We don't, we so, don't. Go ahead. Um, if we could talk more, if you want to talk more about Roman stuff and Greek stuff, I, I know there's, we were going to talk about uh, the Assassin's Creed, Assassin's, the, which one was that? I don't know Assassin's Creed. We did, we did a Viking one. We did the Viking okay. one. And we should probably, I think we should redo that because that one quality got bunked up. I'd love to revisit it. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially after the D <laughs> what the heck that DLC was. Um, but where was I? Oh, I didn't even get into the DLC. Yeah, no, yeah. I played the game, um, I enjoyed it. I, I don't need to buy anything else. I have lost my train of thought. No worries, something about the Roman Empire. Um there's a couple of really fun um I think they're mostly PlayStation One, PlayStation Two games of like gladiator games. I'd love to revisit. Our friend, um, the director of the Sarasota Medieval Fair, Odd Duck Out. Uh, with the at symbol in front, who streams on Twitch. Uh, his When I watched what he was doing on Twitch, I don't know if he has a regular schedule. I, I, if I find out, obviously, when he streams, it shows up on Discord. But um, he was playing an ancient Greek game from Steam. But it was... The, the they're, they're out there. They're out there. Oh, man. No, I'd love to do... I'd love to... I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll put together a put together but, but something for you rain raining in my little my little aside uh downstairs was an actual uh, a viking sword a sword from uh scandinavia weird sorry about that i've been calling Morris. family all day and i was ex- i was thought i thought it was someone calling me back not a problem so i mentioned uh they had a sword i, I think i posted a picture um at least on facebook but i'll show you maybe later um or post on the discord post it to the discord that's what it's um, for it was a very simple uh, Viking sword. Um, you know, the, the way that they make them. Uh, they could be very elaborate. But mm-hmm. this one was something that you'd think that we would be able to afford for for our festival. And I'm like, I, I took a lot of pictures of it. And I want to send it to BKS to have them do a replica as my next sword. It's very simple. Very simple. But I was like, that's cool, at least. I was able to see that one thing. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, yeah, this uh there's so much so much great stuff coming up. I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. of course, just real quick then, of course we have a Discord. Um the Kofi or Coffee, however you want to pronounce it, <laughs> is active. However, the the uh because I'm stupid, the end titles, the animation that I created, I for some stupid reason deleted. A while back so even though it says patreon uh because it was previously a patreon that is still the same for the kofi uh so if you want to get into the discord or you just want to help us out uh the link is down below but uh, uh you can get into our kofi and uh, help us out there or the discord which in the discord has a lot of resources there's a lot of us that do the festival as well um and so on and so forth yee thumbs up Anyways, thanks for thanks for joining us today, talking about Ibarro from season three of Love, Death, and Robots. You can find it on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Indeed, or torrent it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, other than that, uh, that'll be that for this episode of the Duck Past Podcast. Uh, I am NC, your typical host. And I am Red Iron Riot, a.k.a. The War Queen, your lovable co-host. Hooray! <laughs>